Hello, everyone, and welcome to Grammar Lesson 9. Today we'll be talking about conjunctions, but before we get started, as always, let's set up the page. So at the top of your page, if you would, please put the date, the month, the day, and the year. Follow that with Grammar Lesson 9. When you are done with that, skip a line and put down the word conjunction, C-O-N-J-U-N-C-T-I-O-N, -N -N, conjunction. And the abbreviation for the part of speech conjunction is C-O-N-J. Once you're done with that, please skip another line, put down the letters E-X and a colon, that's where we'll be placing an example here shortly. Skip two more lines and write down these four words. Four types of conjunctions. I put that in all caps because that's going to be the heading for the remainder of the notes. I'm going to slide the last note to the top of the page. And watch your spacing here. We're going to skip a line after that heading of four types of conjunctions. And we're going to write down the words coordinating conjunctions. That's C-O-O-R-D-I-N-A-T-I-N-G. Coordinating conjunctions. Go ahead and underline those words once you have them written. Coordinating conjunctions. After that is underlined, I'd like you to skip one, two, three, four, five, and on the sixth line, write down these two words, subordinating conjunctions. Subordinating conjunctions. S-U-B-O-R-D-I-N-A-T-I-N-G. Subordinating conjunction. And, of course, underline that as well. I'm going to slide that last one to the top. And here you see all the way to the end of the notes now. So you should have subordinating conjunctions down. Go ahead and skip one, two, three, and on the fourth line beneath subordinating conjunctions, write correlative conjunctions. C-O-R-R-E-L-A-T-I-V-E. -E. Correlative conjunctions. Once you have that down, skip one, two, three, four lines once more. And write down these two words. Conjunctive, C-O-N-J-U-N-C-T-I-V-E. Conjunctive adverbs. Conjunctive adverbs. And once you are finished with that, for the final one, skip one, two, three, four lines again, and write down this sentence. This is a quote from a Shakespeare play called Macbeth, and the sentence is, Fair is foul, and foul is fair. Fair is foul, and foul is fair. If you have not gotten that down yet, don't sweat it. We'll all be back down here to, together in just a minute. But let me take you back up to the top of the page, and let's get started with the, the notes. So next to conjunction, and then your abbreviation of conjunction, go ahead and write down this definition. A word that joins... Two words, a word that joins two words or groups of words. Conjunction is a word that joins two words or groups of words. As always, examples help best explain this. So let's go back to Tom and Jerry. And let's write down this example sentence. Tom and Jerry ate. 
make a little bit of a space here and write this sentence down as well. We, <laughs> that's not how you spell we. We shopped, comma, but we bought nothing. We shopped, but we bought nothing. And one more example sentence here. Tom ate because he was hungry. Tom ate because he was hungry. Tom ate because he was hungry. All right. So we have the definition of a conjunction is a word that joins two words or groups of words together. I'm going to change the color of my ink here. If you have uh, if you have a different color pen, go ahead and use it. Doesn't matter. Um, but we're going to put in some arrows here. So first of all, uh, let's pick out. There's a conjunction in each of these sentences. In each of these sentences. So we're looking for words that join two words or groups of words together. So in the first sentence here. The conjunction is and. So go ahead and underline and as our conjunction. In the second sentence, the conjunction is but. Go ahead and underline but. In the third sentence, the conjunction is because. So underline because as well. All right, now let's talk about what they are joining. If a conjunction by definition is a word that joins two words or groups of words together, that means in order to find a conjunction, we have to be able to say what it is that they are joining. Okay, so in this first sentence, the word and is joining the idea of Tom and Jerry. In the second sentence, but is joining bigger ideas, not just names of people, but who and what they did. So for example, here, it's the idea of we shopped, and the idea of we bought nothing. The idea of we shopped and we bought nothing. So this conjunction here is combining two big ideas. This conjunction over here with and is combining just two words, two names of people. Down here, because is combining again two big ideas. Tom ate, and over here, he was hungry. Okay, so it's combining those two ideas as well. So that's what a conjunction does. Now let's look at the four types of conjunctions. I'm going to switch back my ink here, and I'm going to move the notes. So the last notes are at the top of the page. I'm going to go ahead and underline this heading here so I don't get confused. Yes, that is indeed a heading. All right, so let's go on with coordinating conjunctions. So I'm just going to pop out a, a, the definition right after the word here. So coordinating conjunctions join join two things of equal power. And I'm going to put power in quotation marks here because uh, we'll talk about that in a second, but they join two things of equal power. Then I'd like you to write down this. There are seven coordinating Conjunctions. And they need to be 
memorized. They are, and then a colon. So coordinating conjunctions join two things of equal power. There are seven coordinating conjunctions, and they need to be memorized. I'm not kidding about that. We'll practice it here in a second. Let me tell you what they are first. Let's go ahead and down and put down the number one, the number two, the number three, the number four, the number five, number six, and the number seven. So the seven coordinating conjunctions are and, but, or, nor, for, so, yet. I'll say that again. They are and, but, or, nor, for, so, yet. And, but, or, nor, for, so, yet. And, but, or, nor, for, so, yet. They are and, but, or, nor, for, so, and yet. And, but, or, nor, for, so, yet. Now be very careful because some of these conjunctions can be different parts of speech depending on how they are being used. So if you find the word for in a sentence and it's joining two different ideas, you have a conjunction. If you find the word for in a sentence and it is showing the relationship between two objects, then you have a preposition. But we'll get into that more later on. They are and, but, or, nor, for, so, and yet. Teachers, if you'd like to challenge the students right now, go ahead and pause the video, have them shut their notebooks, and see who can get all seven in the correct order. And, but, or, nor, for, so, yet. All right, let's continue on with subordinating conjunctions. I'll put the last notes at the top of the page. And let's continue on. So, subordinating conjunctions join things. That's a bad join. Subordinating conjunctions join two things of unequal power. Subordinating conjunctions join two things of unequal power. Again, I'm going to put power in quotes here. I'll explain that in just a second. Subordinating conjunctions join two things of unequal power. There are lots of these. There are lots of these. There are lots of these. Some of them include some of them include if as Since, if, as, since, when, because, and many others. Subordinating conjunctions join two things of unequal power. There are lots of these. Some of them include if, as, since, when, because, and many others. Now, I'm going to move the notes. I'm not moving them down. I'm actually going to move them back up because I want us to get this idea down. These are the two types of conjunctions you're typically going to run into out of the four, coordinating conjunctions and subordinating conjunctions. Those of you that will advance all the way to the next level of grammar need to pay close attention to this because it's going to help you out a lot in level two of grammar. So let's talk about this a little bit. 
if you would please put your pencils down and take a look up here at the screen. We have coordinating and subordinating conjunctions. Two of these sentences are coordinating conjunctions. One of them is subordinating. So when I talk about equal power, let's take a look at this first example. Tom and Jerry ate. If I take out Jerry, Tom still eats. If I take out Tom, Jerry still eats, meaning that Tom has equal power in this idea as Jerry does. If I skip over to the other sentence, we see the idea of we shopped, and we see the other idea of we bought nothing. Again, this is a coordinating conjunction, but because we shopped is an idea independent or just as powerful as we bought nothing. All right, but the third sentence, however, has a subordinating conjunction, which means it's combining two ideas of unequal power or importance. So what I mean by that is Tom ate. That's an idea. And he was hungry. That was an idea. But if I take out the idea of he was hungry, Tom wouldn't have eaten. So he was hungry is a more important idea in this sentence then Tom ate, because one is causing the other. All right, open up your notebooks. Let's go back down and get the last two and the example here. So correlative conjunctions are multi-word conjunctions such as either or, neither, nor. Let me give an example here to show you how this works. Either Tom or Jerry will win. Either Tom or Jerry will win. Our correlative conjunctions here are either and or. Either and or. Either Tom or Jerry will win. If we wanted to use the negative here, we would say neither Tom nor Jerry will win. These are conjunctive adverbs, and conjunctive adverbs act as both adverbs and conjunctions. Conjunctive adverbs act as both adverbs and conjunctions. And let's put out here, they include words like, they include words like, however, and furthermore, and nevertheless. Oh, and by the way, nevertheless is one word. Kind of strange, I know, but it is one word. Further, moreover, nevertheless, let's see what else, accordingly. And therefore. We'll put dots out here because I'm sure there's others. Let's get down to the bottom here where we have our example sentence. Now, automatically, based on the notes today, you ought to be able to pick out the conjunction in this sentence. Conjunction in this sentence is and. So I'm going to put C-O-N-J below the word and. Now, every sentence has to have at least one verb. I'll give you a hint here. This sentence has two verbs, and both of the verbs are linking verbs, meaning that you could substitute the verb for an equal sign, and the sentence would make sense. Our two verbs are is and is. Those are linking verbs because they do not show action like hit or sit or eat. They link a subject to its predicate.
So, I've said before, do not memorize the part of speech of a word, except, of course, the coordinating conjunctions, because they can change depending on how they are used. You'll notice this sentence has four words left, and they are the same words. We've got a pair of fares and a pair of fouls. So if I say, fair is foul, fair is the subject of my sentence. It's the thing that I am talking about. Therefore, it is a noun. And when I say that it is foul, I'm describing what it is. I'm modifying it, which means that this is an adjective. I go to the other side of the conjunction, and I have the same words in the different order. This is another idea. It's another independent idea. So I have foul is fair. So the subject of this idea is foul, which means it is the thing I am talking about, and it is a noun. At the end of the sentence, I'm describing what foul is. I'm modifying it, saying it's fair. So here, it is an adjective. So even though the words switch around on either side of this conjunction, you'll notice that it goes noun, verb, adjective, noun, verb, adjective. All right, that'll do it for the notes this time for Lesson 9. I'll see you at Lesson 10.